When I first started my own company, it was, it was quite a change. But I thought for a while maybe my deal would work out better. And I think I had one pretty good year where, I, you know, we grossed a fair amount, but I had five or six guys working for me. The time you pay all them and pay all your other expenses, you, you know, it, I le- it was an education for me. I learned a hell of a lot, I'll say that, from what it's like to run a business. And so you would oyster what months? Well, usually start in late September, early October, and go right through to the end of April anyway. During the coldest winter months, we, we had a building, and we, we had a little kerosene stove, and, you know, like it would be maybe 10 degrees or 15 degrees of And we came in, and we emptied the boxes of moisture zone to a little conveyor, went up the top of a building, and there was slide open a hatch and slide the oysters down in there and it was, it was like this so that you stood in culling board as you culled it kept just feeding to you and so you stay in out of the cold we worked some days when it was really brutal though you know the, the deck could be covered with ice and I had had a big metal boat made and it was about 40 feet long and I can remember we had to break through sometimes 18 inches of ice in the pond to try to get down to the beds even no it's terrible I ruined the boat. I put holes in the boat, and I'd ram and go up on it and break it and back up and ram and go up and break it. And so, you know, it'd take us hours to try to get down to the beds. But I ruined the boat that way. I sucked up ice into the engine and cracked the block of the engine. And, oh, it was just, you know, it was, it was brutal. That's the only way to describe it for a while there, you know. Mm-hmm. One time when the crew fell overboard, it was a slippery. It was about 20 degrees and blowing real hard, and the deck was slippery. And he fell overboard, and he's he started hollering, he said, I can't swim, I can't swim. And I said, well, try standing up. And he was only up to about here, you know. He never thought he was in that shallow water. Uh, one one time in December, I got the 3 8 inch cable wrapped around a propeller, and I thought, well, the only way to get this is to take off my clothes and dive overboard and, and untangle it. And they all said, oh, you're crazy. I said, well, it's either that or what are we going to do? So I did and uh, got it untangled. And we, we kept it working for a while that day. But then we went into the building, you know, and we had some little bit of heat in there. So <laughs> that was it might have been. But it was a challenge. <laughs> you, was there a limit on how many oysters you could get? Not when you had a grant. Not when you had a... Grant, the way I did, if you can get a thousand, you can sell a thousand. But generally, we we probably sold. Oh, I don't know. Uh, when I I I wait till I had a truck loaded, I could put about 60, 60 bushels on my little pickup truck, and uh, drive them down to Vineyard Haven. At that time, you loaded them onto dollies, you know. They didn't they didn't take them aboard in a truck or anything like that. Just loaded them onto dollies. So I'd go down maybe twice a week, with maybe sixty bushels or something like that. Where would you store them while you're waiting to go down? We stored the bags right in the building, but usually they would freeze at night if you didn't. And we had a little kerosene stove to keep just enough heat in there so it wouldn't freeze. And so you would sell them to who? Well, I'd sold them off island to one guy in Greenwich, Rhode Island, another one in Johnston, Rhode Island. So most of them I sold to one of those two places. And... They, what would they do with them? Would they sell them as oysters? They, yeah, they, they then resold them to restaurants and places like that. Yeah, they had a shellfish business, and I didn't have that. Uh, I thought of it, but I would have had to have a truck and, and knowledge of all these outlets. Did you like doing it when you were doing it? Well, when I first started, you know, it was such an unknown quantity. You know, you thought, oh, gee, maybe this really would amount to something. I mean, one year we we really did pretty well. One of all the years we were in operation, but we grossed quite a bit. But so much of it came in one hand and not the other. You know that you didn't really net all that much. But it, I didn't mind. I like I like being outdoors. And did people like vineyard oysters off island? Yeah, they they really did. What they had is interesting. They had beautiful meats in them, but. If you're trying to sell them for the half shell trade, you know, if you go in and order, uh, say, half a dozen oysters on the half shell, most of these oysters had a little worm that didn't go into the meat at all, but just went into the shell. It was called a polydora, and it would form little black blisters inside. And it spoiled the appearance of the shell. And occasionally, if you open some and set them aside, these little worms would crawl out of these little blisters they were in. And of course, it looked terrible on them. So you that you never could get the top dollar that you could normally get them for the same oyster if it didn't have those blisters on them. And so that was a problem. That's one reason we never got the price that we might have gotten for them otherwise. 
Did you guys eat a lot of oysters? Sure, Shirley said yeah. she used to think only poor people ate oysters because we ate oysters about t 10 times a week. Ago. We ate, yeah, well, we had oysters every possible way you could imagine. I had them fried, boiled, had, had oyster stew, we had oyster casserole, we had, we had oysters Rockefeller. You know, we just, just ate oysters and oysters and oysters and oysters. On the half shell and broiled. I like them a lot better now than when I had to eat them so often. <laughs> <laughs> we practically existed on oysters. Yeah, we never thought of them as a luxury, did we, Shirley?